All right, Job chapter 40, let's call this one, what can you do on land? Not so much because Job is being confronted by God with a bunch of questions about can he climb mountains and whatnot, but there are two land creatures that God is gonna to use to help Job understand once again the limits of his ability as he shifts from primarily focusing on things that Job cannot necessarily know to things that Job cannot necessarily do when it comes to first, mankind. Understanding that as Job was seated at the gate, partially as a defender of the helpless, he was able to quite possibly do a lot to help those who are helpless within his area. However, the wicked in general, God is helping to shift his focus away from why doesn't God deal with him to helping him realize that there's a lot in that question, understanding that it assumes that Job can't. And so as Job seems to get more and more frustrated with God, ultimately God is helping him understand how the limits of his ability to deal with the wicked. Uh, there's a lesson in that, but it's not just the wicked that God is challenging Job to say, okay, if you can humble them or bring them low and uh, bring down the proud along with them, then I will acknowledge that your own right arm can save you. But if not, consider also behemoth, a creature that does not seem similar to anything that we have in existence today, but it's a creature that nevertheless God uses to help Job understand that whole domestication boundary again, meaning there are plenty of animals that mankind has been able to easily domesticate and put to work or either uh, simply keep as companions. But there are still those that lie outside of the realm of what we can easily control. And he uses behemoth as another example of a creature that's created lower than man that mankind still does not easily corral as he will go into the next chapter to describe the ways in which that also extends into the seas as he is going to ask Job, what can you do to contain or control Leviathan? But the thing that probably stood out to me most in this chapter was the way in which God starts out by asking Job, uh, will you really condemn me just so that you can uh, build up yourself as being innocent in this circumstance. And so in doing that, he reminded me of something that an atheist or a non-believing philosopher noticed, and that is speaking ill of others is a dishonest way of praising ourselves. Something that we have mentioned from time to time here as a thought made more or less famous, I guess, by a man named Will Durant reminded me that in this situation where God poses a similar question to Job in raising all of the issues or things that are outside of Job's control, even more than outside of his realm of knowledge. He is once again, not simply humbling Job just to put him in his place. He is helping Job to understand that no matter how much you criticize me, Job, that is not making you any more powerful or more capable in your own abilities. And so likewise for us, sometimes it is important to remember that as tempted as I can be to criticize others in times when I am either in misery or just unhappy about what is going on, my ability to tear them down or make them seem like less does not actually build my own skill set. And so the dilemma in that is the more I take comfort in tearing down those around me, the less time I have to actually develop skills of my own and the more likely I am to simply linger in mediocrity, which is why we often say God's best to you as you go forward in him. God willing, avoiding the temptation to tear down others in ways that actually prevent you or actually prevent us from accomplishing the things that we need 